Pat Love here from Love Healing Hearts. We're going to do a little um, piggyback on the other video I just finished. I want to tell you how I blew it and what God did about it. I'm not one of those people who um, who walk around acting holier than thou and who uh, put up a front and want everybody to think that I am so perfect and I live this clean and 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 um, spotless life. I do my best. I try my best. But there are times in my life I have fallen. And I want to share one with you because some of you ladies and some of you men think that if you don't appease the person you're involved with, the person who's who's got your nose open, so to speak, that if you don't keep them happy, you will lose them. Well, let me tell you this. If that's a person that you would like to commit for life, commit to for life, or you would like to marry, but basically that's what I'm saying, you have to trust that if God has this relationship for you and if God's plan is for you to marry this person, then what God has for you, it is for you no matter what. If the other person is as committed to God as you are, or at least committed, and you are infatuated in love and grossed, all of that, and you want this person to be your, your lifelong committed marital espoused partner. I mean, this has got to be your wife or your husband because they are just all that and 10 bags of chips. Guess what? If God's will is in agreement, it doesn't matter what you do or don't do. What they like or what they don't like. If it is for you, it's for you. Now listen to this story. Some of you may blush and some of you may think, ooh, you can judge it as you will. But I am not perfect. And yes, I have fallen. I have messed up. One of those times was with my husband, my late husband. Milton and I dated for a while. And I had come out of a an eight-year marriage where adultery was the central focus. My ex-husband had committed adultery for five of the eight years. I mean, excuse me, not five of the eight, for the whole eight years. I mean, starting from the second month, according to his own confession. Now, Mamacita, that's me, mm -hmm. Mamacita dealt with it for about three years and totally relinquished it to God. And emotionally, psychologically, in every way I could think, I had covered myself in prayer. But I left one part open. I forgot to cover myself as a sexual being, a woman. So even though God was healing and I wasn't going through any stress behind it, and I was sailing through this marriage, and we were best friends, and we still played racquetball and sang together and held hands because God gave me an understanding that he wasn't an evil person, he was a wounded person. Okay, hence the addiction. Then we were able to remain in a bond until God said, this marriage is over. Get your papers and walk. Then the love just disappeared. Now, here I was, five years, not having had any... um intimacy with my ex-husband. And I was not an old woman like I am now. So I was still hot to trap. But I stayed faithful to him and to God, in spite of the fact that my needs were not being met. You hear me? Okay. Now, I dated another guy. Just, it was very short-lived, about a month or two. And in this relationship, what made me vulnerable was my neediness 
of intimacy, physical intimacy, you hear me? And as a result of that, now nah, I'm safe, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, that with a mighty burning fire, but I was needing me some, okay? <laughs> so what happened? <laughs> okay, okay. So what happened was, uh, this guy and I dated for a hot minute. And he was, he kept toying and playing and, and pushing. And I kept saying, no, 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 no. And I meant no. I didn't want to say no. My body was saying yes. But I was saying no for the sake of God, my commitment to God. Well, we were clowning around and playing. And he literally overpowered me. And he was playing like he was going to rape me. And I mean, he was taking stuff off and I was stopping and but we were both laughing and I, I knew he was playing but it got to the point where he positioned me where I couldn't stop him and he literally raped me so at that point it was something I hadn't had for so long I couldn't even be angry with him I know it's sad but that's what happened well I broke up with him shortly thereafter and but my need still wanted to be met even more so now because we had woken up a, a, a sleeping giant, so to speak. Well, I remained celibate until my husband. We dated and we did pretty good for a good while. But then I'm telling you, this man to me was the sexiest man I ever dated in my life. And I knew when I first heard his voice at church, that that was the man I wanted to marry, even before I married my first husband. So anyway, so this man was already uh, high on my list, at the top of my list. And yes, we got a little too carried away with the smooching. And a few times we, I won't mention how many, <clears throat> but we messed up. And one day I was driving home and I felt God's anger. That scared me. So I had a talk with my man on the phone and told him, we need to break up. It is not that I don't love you. I love you with all my heart, but I will not lose God for any man, no matter how much I love him. So we broke up and I begged him, please, whatever you do, do not call me. I don't care if you need someone's phone number, call someone else. Don't call me for anything. So, moving right along, fast forward a tad, almost a year. I hadn't dialed his number. We were cool. And he wasn't angry with me. He understood because he was saved. And he knew I was right and said so. Okay. I'm doing prison ministry twice a, uh, uh, a month. I mean, going to church five, six nights a week at, at the Harvest Rock Church where they had those renewal services. I was getting all kind of inner healing. And oh, I'm telling you, God was all over me. God was blessing me with so much inner healing and deliverance. And he was doing a psych job on me. He was cleaning up my psyche and all the emotional wounds and the chains from the past and the pains from the past. I mean, God was really doing a work. Now, I'm talking to a friend of mine on the phone and we're laughing and joking. And I, I said, girl, we need to pray. And she said, why? I said, I'm feeling it again. I've been feeling it all last night. I'm feeling it now. Milton's trying to call me and we got to rebuke that because I don't want to get caught up in that. I was fighting with tooth and nail not to get caught up in that again. I was serious. I didn't want to see him again in life. And my sign I had given to God was, Lord, if you have ordained for Milton and me to get married. Make him only contact me to ask me to marry him. If that is not in your book, don't ever let me even cross his path at a grocery store. I want him totally out of my life. Can you hear me? I was in love with this man, but by God's grace, 
Do you know I didn't have a hard time staying away from him? It was so easy, it was surprising. I couldn't believe how easy it was because God gave me the ability because I was obeying for his sake. And when you do things for God, he makes it easy. Oh, I'm trying not to get emotional. Because I love the fact that God stacks the cards in our favor. When we try to obey him, he makes it easy. Okay, anyway. Still deeply in love with Milton. I totally cut off all contact and didn't allow any. Now, I went to a different church. I did everything to get Brother Man out of my life and out of my system. He was still in my system, but he was out of my life. And in my book, it was for good. Now, one day I'm talking to my friend. There's that conversation again. And I ask her to pray with me because I feel the, the thing that I feel in my spirit that Milton is trying to call me. And he's struggling with whether he should call me or not. And I said, okay, well, I said, let's rebuke the devil. Let's rebuke the temptation because I don't want to get caught up in temptation. You know how that goes. So we're rebuking, oh, Satan, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Milton will not call, blah, 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 blah. You know, we covered that in prayer big time. So we talked for about another 45 minutes to an hour. And well, we're off on a whole bunch of other subjects. And guess what? I get a beat. So I'm a hairdresser. I'm figuring somebody's calling for an appointment. I click over and it's him. I couldn't believe it. We hadn't talked in almost a year. I'm thinking, I'm like, what are you calling for? You're not supposed to call me. I'm going to hang up. No, wait, wait. I've been praying about it. No, I'm going to hang up because you're not supposed to call. Just let me just say this one thing, please. He had to spit it out because I wasn't going to let him talk. He says, we need to pray about getting married. He had to get <laughs> Well, anyway, I never said yes to this day. <laughs> He just, you know, we just said, we'll see how it goes. And I'll pray about it and see if it's God's will. And um, as time went on, just a matter of months, we got married. It was God's will. And we had a fun, not when I tell you, we had a phenomenal relationship. We had a phenomenal understanding of each other. Oh my goodness, I wish half the couples out there could experience just half of what we had. Even when Milton couldn't perform anymore after the third a year of his, uh, you know, he had a lot of physical problems and he had a stroke. So there was that was the end of our lovemaking as a married couple. But I stayed faithful to that man. He was worth it. We had more intimacy, even without that, than most people have with it <laughs> in their youth, in their great health. We were intimate psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, in every way, shape, and form. It was a phenomenal love we shared. Phenomenal. God blessed us with a beautiful relationship and a beautiful marriage. Because we gave up the very thing we wanted. And that was the relationship with each other. Mixed with some failure. And in order to keep the failure out, we had to stay away. And that's what we did. And God blessed our efforts to obey him. God is faithful. You will not lose a good thing when you give it up for God. God is faithful in that. He's not going to leave you on the losing end. He's not going to leave you on the short end of the stick. Trust me on that. God is good and he's worthy to be faithful to. Be faithful to God. If you got to push a relationship aside, trust God that if it's in his will, you will not lose that relationship. But when it comes around, it will be on God's terms and it'll be right. Amen.